Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so it is our pleasure to have you in this weekend. Uh, and we, uh, me actually as uh, the international officer of uh, Department Management, would like to apologize before before we have uh, a miscommunication for the scheduling session for your uh, today's agenda. And thank you, Mr. Ganjar, for uh, always coming and supporting us. And again, as part of our uh, improving in the quality of education, there are some uh, courses that will join today's session, including supply chain management for the graduate uh, students and the international business in uh, undergraduate students uh, in two classes. So uh, without further ado, I invite Mr. Ganchar to have an opening remark as part of our head department. Thank you, Pak Tantawi. Again, uh, thank you for Professor Arun Kumataravdar from MSU for being our guest lecturing uh, guest lecturer today. Uh, it's very nice to have you being part of our institution because uh, right now we're trying to be more and more globally. We want to have uh, that our student will have uh, exposure from global area. So they are not teach by uh, the, the uh, UNER lecturer, but we will have, they will have exploration and exposure from uh, international university. Uh, Alhamdulillah that uh, right now our institution is already on the ranking 300 uh, 69 by QS. Yesterday it al uh, already announced. While that uh, by subject business and management, uh, our ranking is about 301 and 350. So we are not only make uh, internationally become only our vision, but we are part of it. And we want to be raised and raised again because uh, last year our position uh, still on the 400 and right now we are uh, on 300. So hopefully that uh, your support to our institution can make us uh, being more global. And so we can make global collaboration, not only for uh, uh, lecture exchange like this, but in the future, we have more collaboration with student exchange, with a joint class, joint uh, course, uh, or maybe we can make uh, the arrangements for student competition because uh, I think it would be fruitful if we make our student, uh, MSU student and Ilanga student uh, facing each other and they will have uh, maybe some friendly competition between our institution. I think it will be fruitful. So let us discuss for another uh, uh, opportunity in the future. Uh, and again, thank you for being part of uh, our guest lecturer. Hopefully that all of us will have uh, many benefit, not only from our side, but uh, it's also for your side. Barakallah, thank you, uh, Prof. Arun. Thank you, Pak Tantawi. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and student, please welcome. enjoy the discussion for today. It's only for one hour, I guess, but yes. I hope the impression is more than one hour. Barakallah, thank you for all. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ganjar. And yes, uh, again, uh, this is your session. Uh, professor, uh, please, uh, all students, you can have uh, 15 minutes uh, after 45 minutes of delivery from Professor Arun. The session is yours, Professor. Thank you very much and uh, good morning to the audience, especially good morning to uh, Professor Gancha and Tanuti. Thank you for introducing and such an amazing introduction about the university. I hope that um, uh, Everyone knows uh, I am Arun Kumar Tanaka from Management and Science University. It is one of the top universities in Malaysia. So we are also uh, start working on collaborating with other other universities, not only staff exchange but also in the research. 
because the embassy was um, greatly emphasizing on uh, research, how to improve the research activities, as well as uh, definitely the collaborating with the other universities in terms of uh, exchanging our student and staff so that we can uh, share our knowledge and improve. Uh, ultimate goal is to improve it. So with, with the line with uh, these objectives today, I'm going to, uh, actually it's just a sharing session about my experience in supply chain management. I hope that all of you will enjoy. One second, good afternoon. I sorry, good morning to everyone. I'm sorry that uh, I didn't know that uh, the time difference is hopefully in uh, Indonesia is uh, now it is eight o'clock or nine o'clock. Yeah, uh, it is eight o'clock. Oh, it is very early morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning to everyone, the audience. I hope that you will, you will not feel sleepy in my session. So today, uh, what I'm going to start, uh, what I'm going to discuss is nothing but global supply chain, the future direction and the challenges. So without a further ado, I must start um, the session today. Uh, so, so basically the goal of this session is to understand or to, familiar, uh, to make your, you familiar with the terms called global supply chain management. And also uh, the goal of this session is to identify the benefit of this uh, global supply chain management. And the S is the biggest challenges in the global supply chain management, which is truly, truly important for us to understand and to identify the crucial factors influencing the global supply chain disruption, which is the main challenge that uh, we have been facing since the uh, pandemic. And last but not least, uh, the reshape the global supply chain management with the cutting edge technology, that what would be the future direction of the supply chain management. So before I um, go to all these things, I first uh, discuss about what is actually global supply chain management. If you look at uh, the terms global supply chain management, before this terms established, there was a supply chain management. Actually, this is one of the part of distribution system in a marketing. So if you look at in a marketing, there is a one uh, P called place. So in the place we cover not only the market, actually, we talk about a value chain. First, this concept developed by the Michael Porter in 1985, that how could you, provide a superior value to our customer. So he proposed the concept called value chain. So in the value chain, he categorized the activity into two different manner. One is from the uh, upstream and one is from the downstream. So slowly that concept evolved and call, I mean, they create a new terms called supply chain management. So if you think from a common sense perspective that people think supply chain management means to manage our supplier. However, in practically, the supply chain management doesn't only emphasize on supplier, but also it creates a chain. It creates a chain between the supplier till the customer, till the customer. And due to the globalization, since most of our, our for example, look, look at today's event, See, this is called the effect of globalization that even though you're sitting at um, Indonesia, but you can, you can uh, listen my lecture from Malaysia. This is, the, this is the benefit of the globalization, globalized world. So due to this reason, many companies, they collaborate. They create their uh, partners across the world, across the world. So day by day, the supply chain concept evolved and become very complicated and become very complex because Sometimes probably your manufacturing unit at Malaysia or in Indonesia, however, your suppliers is from uh, some other country, some other country. So this is the reason the researcher as well as the academicians uh, slowly emphasize of understanding this complicated process called supply chain management. And when the supply chain management expand throughout the world, the terms is called global supply chain management. So it is not, I mean, fundamentally, there is a no significant difference between supply chain management and the global supply chain management, except the global supply chain management include a global, include global, and more emphasizing on security and timely deliver everything. So timely deliver everything. So when you think about a global supply chain management in a very natural and a simplest way, we can define it as a, is ensuring the security and timely delivery of everything from raw material 
to the finished goods to the finished goods see, this is the main things that we have to emphasize in the global supply chain management i can give you a very interesting fact just i think uh, three weeks before when indonesian government announced that they stop exporting palm oil see immediately the palm oil price in the world increase see this is one of the effect of global supply chain management why because indonesia plays a very important role in the palm oil industry around the world in fact indonesia capture almost 60 percent share in the palm oil around the world and palm oil is really important raw material not only for the cooking purpose but also for the cosmetics products in fact I'm sure that many of you um, already start enjoying the coffee with your condensed milk. So palm oil is a part of the condensed milk because without palm oil, you cannot have a condensed milk. See, so this is the reason we should understand the importance of this global supply chain management. So every country, regardless your size, regardless your uh, whatever the uh, size of your population, you plays an important role in the supply chain management, in the supply chain management. So now, if you really understand theoretically or uh, in, a, in an academical way, what is a global supply chain management, we can define academically that global supply chain management is a process of ensuring the security and timely delivery of everything from raw material to finished consumer goods as they travel from the manufacturer and suppliers to the wholesalers, retailer, and other distribution points. See, if you look at this definition, you can easily find out there are many actors out there, including the suppliers, distributor, manufacturer, retailer, wholesaler, and customer. And this supply chain management, this chain actually tie all these people in one chain. And this is the reason why it becomes very, very complicated. And you must learn how to manage all these activities effectively and efficiently. Effectively and efficiently. So what is the main goal or the main aim of the supply chain management? There are very uh, important role plays by the supply chain management. Why? Because it helps you to reduce the cost. It, it definitely ensure the efficiency and also mitigate the risk. Mitigate the risk in terms of uh, demand and supply, demand and supply. So in other words, if you really have a complicated business or if you have a really big business, you must have an efficient supply chain management system within your I mean, company. Otherwise, it would be very difficult for you to be sustain your business in future. So now if you look at this uh, uh, global supply chain management uh, in terms of, okay, let me make it bigger. Probably it will be easier for you to, okay. See, if you, if you really want to understand the global supply chain management in, in terms of the uh, picture, see a supply chain consistor. If you look at the upper stream, upper stream is considered as a supplier and manufacturer, distributor, and slowly go to the downstream where they focus on retailer and customer. So everyone, everyone, it, it, even though the name of this chain is called supply chain, but it doesn't mean that it emphasizes only on suppliers. It includes each and every parties within this chain. That, what, what is the main reason, as I told you, to minimize the cost and to ensure a superior value to their customer. Superior, because when you can minimize your cost, definitely, you can provide a better quality and better services to your customer. So that is the one of the main goal of the supply chain management. And definitely what is the main um, uh, risk is there to match between supply and demand. So which is very, very important. Right now. Why? Because as I mentioned to you just now, that when Indonesian government announced that uh, they, they, they don't want to export any more palm oil, it creates a uh, disruption in the market in terms of what? Your demand and supply, because there is a demand, but you are stopping the supply. So as a, as a result, it will create a havoc in the market. It will create a havoc in the market. It could be many reasons that we are going to learn a little bit later, that I'll be discussing a little bit later, that what are the main reasons that uh, this kind of disruption happened and how we can mit uh, mitigate all these challenges. Probably I'll be discussing a little later. So this is the main things that you have to understand 
that uh, supply chain or global supply chain always focus on how we can balance between supply and demand supply and demand if there is a huge supply in the market but there is a no demand definitely there will be an equilibrium in the market so as a result if you have an effective supply chain management system within your country you can easily tackle this kind of challenges easily tackle this kind of challenges so what actually you are achieving if you have a if you have an effective global supply chain management definitely you can achieve a higher profit but the question is, how can you do that? How does the supply chain management, this global supply chain management, uh, helps you to achieve this higher profit? It's a very important question. So definitely, if you have this global supply chain management system within your organization, you can make the right product at the right place, at the right store, at the right quantity, to the right customer, and at the right time. So in other words, you can say that this chain helps you to make everything right so that you can make higher profit. You can make higher profit. And this is the reason why every business must have a, uh, I could say that uh, a, a crucial knowledge about this supply chain management, about the supply chain management, especially in the global uh, arena. Because if, if you don't have a proper supply chain management within the organizations, or if you not integrated your suppliers, partners, and customer within your system, you cannot make higher profit because at definitely you cannot make everything right there, everything right there. So this is the reason why we have to understand the global supply chain management. And I hope that by looking at this picture, you already understand or you're familiar with the terms of global supply chain management. Okay, uh, even if you look at here in the supply network, how it works actually, even in this picture, you can find out. See, the supply chain management doesn't only focus on uh, supplier product. It also create a network between materials, information, and finances, the money, even how does money goes. Because when you deal with your suppliers from one country to another country, definitely you need a financial institution to handle it. You, you are not going to pay in cash. It's not a small business that you pay $10, $10 or $20 to your uh, suppliers. It's not like that. So as a result, the supply chain management not only focus on flowing the material, but also the information, also the finance system. So they integrated all the partners, all the partners, including the bank, including the retailers, including even the data uh, management company, data management company. For example, if you look at the Dell website, see if you if you want to buy a Dell laptop, what do you need to do? You have to go to the Dell website and order from there. Or if you buy any any uh, product from the e-commerce website, see there is a information flow from that website. So it's not only the material flow, but also the information, the financial partner. So they need a financial partner, whether you really paid the amount or not. You have to ensure that. So there are many people involved in this chain. So as a result, it looks very complicated and you have to have an effective network for that. You have to have an effective network for this. So these are the main seven principles of the supply chain management. Currently that most of the organizations, in fact, the researchers are focusing on. What is the main principle? Principles number one, that adopt supply chain based on service needed of each customer segment. See, they try to personalize the uh, supply chain management according to the customer. Then customize logistic network for each segment. In fact, you have to have a customized logistic network. Customized, for example, like as a, as a Amazon, if you look at the Amazon as a global company. So Amazon in Indonesia, Amazon in Malaysia, Amazon in US and Amazon in any of the Western country, they may need a different kind of logistic system for e each and every country. So you have to have a different customized uh, supply chain management concept system. Then principle three, align the demand planning across the supply chain. You, have, you, you must have a proper demand planning for that. Otherwise, there will be lots of supply in the market, but there will be no demand due to the higher competition the, around the world now. Then principle number five, out, uh, outsources strategically. So you have to invest in outsourcing, not always you cannot just simply uh, become your owner of your own suppliers. You can also have outsources uh, that you can acquire it in a very low cost. 
Then there is another principle called differentiate product closer to the customer. You must uh, uh, build to differentiate yourself from your, from your competitors in terms of how effectively you can deliver the product, how effectively you can deliver the product. So principle number six is developing information technology and support multi-level decision-making process, not only for the company, but also for the customers, but also for the customers, which is very, very important uh, principles. And principle number seven, adopt both service and financial metrics as well, because you have to calculate your customer, that how profitable customer do you have? So this is very, very important in this current world, the analytics. So these are the main um, uh, principles that most of the supply chain managers of the organizations are really emphasizing on. So now, if you look at uh, the importance of this global supply chain management, probably you may say, so since it is a very difficult or complicated system, so why do I need it? Why do I need it? Why do I need to really adopt this system? Why can't we just focus on our own business or why we can focus on our own market? So if you don't expand your business, you cannot sustain in a long term. Every organization, for example, just now, um, uh, your, your head of the department mentioned that uh, your, your university is ranking higher and higher. What is the reason? Because to show that you are growing, you are expanding in, in, uh, in, in, in not only uh, in terms of the knowledge, but in terms of the university. Okay, across the world. So every organization, every business organization wants to improve their performance and it wants to expand. So when you start expanding your business, definitely you need a supply chain management. Definitely you need a supply chain management. And that's the, this is the reason you need, you need to have the knowledge that what is the main uh, importance of this supply chain management. So it is a better management of human function because when you have this system within your organization, you can manage effectively the demand and supply uh, system so that you can easily uh, maximize your profit, maximize your profit. Then it will help you to optimize the transportation management. You can easily optimize your transportation management from, by, sorry, by using this uh, system. Better risk and threat management. In fact, it will helpful for you to manage your uh, transportation system, your logistic system, which is very, very important and reduce the overall over at cost, because the more you produce and the less you become, um, uh, less you use the resources, it will help you to gain, uh, uh, gain the advantages on the cost. So these are the main uh, benefit that you can get it from the global supply chain management. But you see recently uh, due to the COVID, what happens actually, uh, there is a huge disruption comes in this global supply chain management. Huge disruption. It is just because of this uh, COVID. It was smoothly done around the world. Around the world. However, once the COVID actually um, ignite in the market, definitely it, it creates a huge disruption. Because just now I mentioned that there uh, I will be discussing about the challenges. So before I go to the general challenges, you look at what is the specific challenges in currently in current world that we have been facing due to this COVID. So data breaching. 38% managers agree that due to the COVID, uh, the supply chain management breached the data, breached the data. Breach means there is a cyber terrorism attack. Uh, many people create a lot of issue. I will show you some of the uh, news heading uh, to prove that really, really we are suffering now with this supply chain management. And due to this reason, uh, we have, I mean, the price is shooting in every country around the world and inflation is inevitable. Uh, every country is getting this inflation pressure. It is because of the supply chain. Then cyber attack on the suppliers, 30% increase due to this COVID. Then vulnerabilities created by the distributed workforces. See, due to this uh, lockdown, uh, there, there is a huge immense uh, pressure on the distribution system because suddenly uh, the, the e-commerce industry booming and everybody start ordering from the online. As a result, the logistic companies are facing uh, real uh, difficulties. So they said 29% actually increases the vulnerability. Here. So these are the few of the example that how uh, the COVID or this uh, pandemic actually create a pressure for the supply chain. So, so in terms of the challenges, in terms of the challenges, if you really ask about what are the main challenges that global supply chain management face, the challenges, in other words, we call disruption, disruption that everything run is smoothly, but suddenly something happened that it creates a disruption. The question is, if you look at, these are the sum of the recent um, headlines in a big way, like Shanghai lockdown exposed global supply chain strain. 
from the sneaker to the Tesla, China lockdown unpent global supply chain. See, SPS stock had a rough first quarter as several companies struggled with the supply chain disruption. See, these are the some of the example I can show, I can produce in front of you. And if you look at in published in 21st May, 2020 is all our recent um, uh, headings that actually you can find it out around the world. That is not only Indonesia, it's not only the Malaysia, or it's not only any country in the world. The entire world has been suffering in terms of this global supply chain management disruption. So disruption is a crucial concern in the supply chain management. So when it talks about the risk of the global supply chain management, this is called the risk, a disruption. Because when there is a disruption, definitely everything stops. Definitely everything stops. So if you look at this um, COVID-19 outbreak across the supply chain, so what is the highest impact actually you get? So they are they classified. If you look at from the manufacturing uh, toward the distribution consumption, or service industry. So if you look at here, the raw material in terms of the agriculture, their impact is very low. Impact, the, this disruption impact is very low. What is the highest impact you can find? In the food and services or the food retailers. Because the suddenly customer uh, start buying a huge amount of product. So definitely there is a in, imbalance between demand and the supply, demand and the supply. So this is the reason during the COVID, there is a huge disruption in supply chain. That's in the picture, you can find it out, the impact level, as well as uh, in which industry it, uh, it happens. You see? So this is, this is the main thing that is a concern for entire world, that how this kind of uh, short-term things can really affect, affect your uh, disruption. So when you think about a global supply chain disruption, basic, broadly you can categorize it into two ways, these challenges. One is a demand challenges or demand risk. Another one is an operational risk. Another is an operational risk. So this is the main things that we have to focus on, the risks. You can categorize into three. One is a supply risk, demand risk, and operational risk in terms of disruption. But the question is, what are the main factors could affect this risk? But before we go to the factors, first we look at what is called supply risk. So supply risk means when there is a disruption, when there is a disruption in the global supply chain management, probably as a manufacturer, you cannot get the supply of your raw material. A great example that I, I, I mentioned even a few minutes ago, that Indonesian government announced that they want to stop, despite they now don't make it normal, but when they announced that there will be no more export of palm oil, see, definitely the supply effect because of this disruption. Think about Ukraine and Russia's wire. See, everywhere the product price is shooting very high. The petrol price is very, very high. Why? Because there is a uh, lack of supply of all the products. So that, this is the reason, this is one of the risks is called supply risk. There's another risk related to the global supply chain management is called demand risk. So demand disruption. Demand disruption means, see, once government announced the lockdown, what happened? Our customer immediately started buying a lot of, lot of products, suddenly demand increase, but there is a no enough supply in the market. So it creates a disruption. As a result, there is an operational risk happening. There is another, another risk also is there in the supply chain management called operational risk. So usually operational risk means when there is a transportation disruption. See, when there is a huge lockdown, when there is a huge lockdown, the people cannot uh, actually go out to distribute the product. So that is called your transportation distribution. Huh? operational risk. So these are the three, I mean, the risk associated with the uh, global supply chain management can be classified broadly into these three categories. But the question is, what are the factors affecting it? What are the factors? It's not only because of the COVID-19. You may, you, can, you don't think that, oh, because of only the virus can create this disruption? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Disruption, disruption can come from these four broad factors. One is called environmental factor, so like natural disaster, I give you some of the example. Geopolitical, see, another example is like Russia and Ukraine, um, uh, what is going on there? So it can also create a huge disruption there. Economical factor, probably the country's um, uh, policies, when the government changes or when the government uh, creates some rules and regulation, like Indonesian government, when they stop exporting the palm oil, so that is called economic factor affecting the other countries or the technological disruption. 
technological disruption means many companies actually invested in lots of AI. We will be, we'll be seeing all this technological advancement in the supply chain uh, within a few minutes if you give the time. So these are the four broad uh, factors actually affecting, affecting the supply chain uh, disruption. If I'm first, please, you can actually uh, uh, tell me, I can slow down, okay? So, uh, so far we learned that there are three major risks related with um, supply chain, global supply chain management. These are supply risk, demand risk, and operational risk. And the main factor that affect this disruption is environmental, geopolitical, economical, and technological. So when there is a disruption, what would happen? In a nutshell, I'm not going for very specifically. See, like, it is clear that after this a significant disruption due to this COVID-19, the economic output will be 5% lower in the total in the see, look at Look at the impact of the disruption. Look at the risk of this uh, supply chain management. See, the economic output will be 5% lower in 2022 than pre-pandemic forecast. And when 5%, probably to you, 5%, 5% is a huge amount. It's a huge amount. Small firms and entrepreneurs will be more likely to fail than larger corporations. So due to this kind of risk, due to this kind of disruption, what happened? The big company may survive, may survive because they have a huge investment previously. But our country, like most of the Asian, or, uh, Asian country, including Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, actually we, we our, our economy mainly developed or uh, based on, founded on, uh, small and medium enterprises, small and medium enterprises. So definitely they are more likely to fail, more likely to fail due to this kind of disruption. Many of the low wages earners who lost their job due to this COVID-19 will find difficult to find a new jobs in the short term. See, even just because of the disruption in the supply chain, many people lose the job. For example, like a lorry driver, if you think about a lorry driver, if there is a technological, you know, uh, there is a lots of technological advancement like um, autonomous car, driverless car. You don't need a driver. So many people lose their job. There are many, many uh, technological advancements happening around the world that can actually take out our human job, human job. So that is very important. And poor people will see their standard of living decline. Another impact in the society that uh, people can see that their standard of living is declining. This is the reason why you have to understand the impact of this global supply chain management disruption. This there is an I emphasize on this that probably you may think about the risk, but risk has a greater impact on the society, a greater impact on the society. So slowly, what happened due to this kind of risk to mitigate the risk? The company is now transforming the traditional supply chain from the modern global supply chain solution. So this is the main um, uh, dramatic changes. Slowly, the companies are, are shifting from uh, traditional supply chain, because if you look at the traditional supply chain, there is only one simple line and they create the supply chain. Whereas now the digital supply networks created by using the advanced technologies, by using the advanced technologies. There is a huge amount of uh, investment is going on in this uh, to create a digital supply network, because um, ultimately the company realized that uh, global supply chain plays a very, very important role, important role. So if you look at here, they synchronize the planning, connected the customer, factory of the future, we will be learning. And uh, uh, there is intelligent supply, digital development and dynamic fulfillment. So what they actually talks about that make our global supply chain management as a smart global supply chain solution. So traditionally you just link with each other, but now by um, analyzing or by integrating um, your, your, your partners in the a, in a same line, what you could do, you can provide the services much more faster than traditional manner. And that's why this is the, we, we call this is the dawn of IR 4.0, international, uh, sorry, industry revolution 4.0. It is because of this uh, AI and the technological advancement. So why should we, I mean, why, what is the reason that we need this innovation in the global supply chain management? And what kind of innovation that actually you really need it? 
supply chain management, if you think, you, you cannot think only a development in terms of the logistic industry. Actually, it creates, the innovation is emphasizing in every uh, possible uh, sector of the supply chain management, including design for the assembly. There is a robotic assembly is there. That's why the 3D uh, of 3D is coming, artificial uh, intelligence are there. Then uh, there is a virtual reality, uh, um, augmented reality. You can use the glasses and you can develop your product. You can see before you make the product. So that's why there is a design for assembly, design for manufacturing. Even the manufacturer, there is a robotic manufacturing. That is also part of the global supply chain management. Design for the product serviceability how you can uh, service your product. For example, you buy a phone, but suddenly the phone stops working at your phone. So how can you service it? You, the customer doesn't have a time to come to your company or to service center. So company are thinking from that point of view. That, okay, I want to provide the service at your home, at your home. You don't have to come to me. That is how the companies are differentiating themselves. So they create some technologies like 3D printer, You'll be surprised to know that. The 3D printer actually is a, one of the uh, greatest invention in 21st century. In 3D printer, what you can do, you can even create an iPhone at your home. As long as you have the material, you put the iPhone, uh, I mean, you just uh, download the, uh, what is called, the design and everything, and you put all your materials, the 3D printer will print and exactly give you that phone. So, I mean, companies are really emphasizing on all those things, that how can we provide a service at the home that because definitely you think about your car when you want to service your car you have to take an appointment you have to wait for one week time we, the customer doesn't have that much time that much patience here so that's why design for the products are visibility they're finding some kind of innovation and how we how could we uh, provide this sort of uh, superior service the customers at home then design for the environment even what is the environmental friendly product Whatever the product we have done, we know that the environment is a very good, I mean, very crucial concern in this 21st century because every every country is facing the global warming. So how could you uh, really uh, design some product that can be helpful for the environment? And last but not least, is designed for Six Sigma, the quality product, the quality product. So if you look at this um, uh, picture, you can easily understand that what are the things that they are really making by industrial 4.0 roadmap in the logistic industry. So they give all kinds of features that how uh, it will work, how, how you will connect your every uh, component of the supply chain management with the centralized system management system. So this is actually a uh, very important thing that you have to understand. So as a result, these are the technologies are involving around the world. See, this is the supply chain technology innovations. Number one, hyper automation, digital supply chain twin, immerse experience and application, age ecosystem, supply chain security, environmental social governance, embedded AI and analytics and augmented data intelligence. These are the main uh, innovation that the comp most of the companies wanted for their supply chain management in this 21st century. So even this can help the company to rethink or to redesign, to redesign their uh, supply chain management, supply chain management. So just go a little bit uh, of all this thing, what is called hyper, hyper automation. See the key principles of this hyper automation is that everything should be connected, automated. Everything should be automated. That is the main things that they're focusing on. That everything should be automated, everything regardless your your business processes regardless your your the way you talk to your customer everything should be automated so digital supply chain twin what does it mean by digital supply chain twin so they talk about end to end decision making process so everyone can be part of the decision making process including your supplier your manufacturer as well as the customer so they know each other well that is called end to end then immerse experience and application. See, like for example, head mounted display, 5G, smart glasses. So these are immersive experience because now the company doesn't focus on customer satisfaction. Now the company uh, actually focus on customer experience. How could you give the better experience to the customer? The best experience to the customer because always remember customer, remember the experience. And based on your experience, for example, if you go to any hotel, 
if you go to any hotel and you really impressed with your services next time also you want to go to that hotel why it is not because of that services it's you gain a a, a and and very uh, attractive service so your experience actually forces you drives you to go to that hotel again so the experience plays a very important role this is the reason most of the companies are focusing on this kind of immersive experience and application by using any technology then the edge ecosystem the edge ecosystem they talk about the data application for that how can we analyze the data like blockchain if you talk about like cryptocurrency is a part of this edge ecosystem is a edge ecosystem so because they deal with the huge amount of data and then you understand how you, uh, i mean what kind of product you should uh, manufacture and provide to the customer then supply chain security definitely uh, when everything is automated security plays an important role so you have to have a, a very powerful and extensive security system security measurement there. environmental social governance definitely global supply chain have a vital role play in their contribution to the both mapping and accessing the ecg risk because see, when you deal with the entire global supply chain management you have to respect other countries rules and regulation so you must fo focus on that governance as well so by technologically the ai can mitigate that risk as well then embedded the ai and analytics definitely ai is artificial intelligence and the analytics is uh, when you analyze all the data so that is called intelligent robotic picking system see the robot will do all the things um, as i told you like driverless car driverless car can actually distribute your product even drone drone distribution system amazon already adopted the drone distribution system now no more human distributions at the us in the western country they actually study sending the product by using the uh, drone in fact the pizza hut you will be surprised that when you order a pizza at a western country they use the drone to deliver at your house there is no traffic jam there is no excuse of human error so the drone will immediately come i mean immediately inform you on your phone that okay i reached at your home please open the door and pick the pizza from me so that is called embedded ai and analytics system last but not least is augmented data intelligence so you have to be have a, a deal with a huge amount of data and you must have a data scientist to understand what you should do for the next so if you look at uh, this idea you can find it out that information technology plays a very important role in every aspect of supply chain management every aspect for your suppliers the suppliers app for the manufacturer there is apps the distributor there is apps retailer there is apps and customer also there is apps so each and every uh, component in the chain you must embedded with the information technology because that is the future that is the future of the supply chain technology so the what is the benefit of this transformation like when you really transform your traditional um, supply chain management into a modern supply chain management it elevate the performance and the speed transparency and accuracy employee satisfaction will be very very high because the work will be reduced and supported by the technology customer satisfaction guarantee reliability and flexibility my uh, flexibility like for example uh, some customer you know demand that i want a cake sharp at 12 am definitely human cannot guarantee you so only technology can help you that is called flexibility because our, nowadays our customers become too complicated too complicated they they demand something which is not possible i want my product within 5 minutes which is not possible sometimes so this is the reason the technological uh, invention is very very important okay uh so what is the five i i i think that uh, my i have another few minutes time to wrap up maybe two more minutes probably. okay so what is the uh, future trends for the supply chain management you see look at there are basically the five future trends you can find number one supply chain uh, uh, digitalization as we learned that definitely this is the future of your supply chain the how you can digitalize your supply chain by enabling the technology raise of the ai and iot internet of things that everything should be connected everything should be connected sustainability is also plays a very important role that whatever the process you include it must be sustainable not only in terms of the technological part but also it can helps you to sustain for the future growth of the big data analytics as i mentioned to you that just now that you must have a huge amount of data to process and growth of circular supply chain and continuously you have to improve your 
supply chain management in 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 uh, integrating yourself with your customer with your suppliers with the retailers and the distributors uh, so in a wrap up mission what do you find out yes global supply chain management is a very important and crucial for you we have to understand how these uh, challenges that disruption can handle which is very important and by using this technology we can improve our global supply chain management and we can uh, minimize the complexity of this global supply chain management that's all for me and uh, you can have a q and a session now. okay uh, thank you so much professor uh, arun so we invite the students to have a fruitful discussion over this topic Anyone from any classes, from any courses? You can uh, type your uh, question uh, in the Zoom chat, or maybe you can uh, turn on your microphone to directly involve with uh, Professor Arun. Anyone, please? Or maybe. Uh, Am I uh, as a as student? Uh, I want to ask you, uh, Professor Arun, as well. Sure, sure, please. Okay. Anyone? Uh, in in your last uh, delivery, there would be a very challenging or an opportunity on the sustainability sustainability issue in the global supply chain. I might notice there would be something like zero net supply chain, if I'm not mistaken. So the thing is. Uh, maybe some of the there would be very challenging for developing countries to catch up with zero net transition or maybe zero net or sustainability when they have to catch up with uh, economic growth. Uh, what's your take on on the statement? Excellent, very good question. Well, this is a very important um, uh, concern even in the global supply chain management. That uh, actually, how can you mitigate this uh, problem? Okay, but you see, this is the reason why we need a, a technological uh, intervention, because the by using the AI, because AI artificial intelligence will help you to minimize all these environmental issues, the zero emissions. Like example, you see, due to this war, what happened? Due to this war, immediately European country they uh, make a deal that there will be no more petrol car. No more petrol cars. So it will help you to minimize your emission, number one. Number two, now many of the, even if you look at uh, when you purchase uh, Air Asia ticket, see they clearly mention that how much uh, that plane is emission is environmental. So by using all those data, definitely day by day, the, our, our um, supply chain management will be very powerful by enabling with these technological things. It will be sustainable, but at the initial stage, it will be difficult because it requires a huge amount of manpower, technology, as well as the investment, as well as the investment. But I hope that another 10 to 15 years, you can see these changes, dramatical changes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. So actually, again, uh, the developing countries or the business in the developed countries should compete with the advancement of technology with the advanced countries. Unfortunately. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Yeti, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Tantawi. Uh, hello, Mr. Arun. I'm Yeti. I'm the one of lecturer in uh, Faculty of Economic Erlanga University. Uh, I'm uh, curious about the for, uh, your point point, uh, uh, your PPT about reducing risk. The most uh, important or the uh things that uh can uh be feel about a global supply chain is reducing risk oh how uh, can we reduce the risk yes but i think uh if we uh, talk about the global supply chain that's mean that we got to conduct with uh, a lot uh, of a uh, country a lot of uh, people that's mean that we got to uh uh we got to know and we got to understand about other culture. I uh, think that's uh, uh, very difficult. How can you say that uh, about global supply chain can reduce the risk? 
Maybe you Very can good. explain about, thank Very you. Very good question. When you talk about your uh, supply chain, I mean, uh, in terms of the culture, it is not only the culture, madam, uh, even um, a government rules and regulations also differ from each other country uh, when you deal with the business. But definitely, see, because of the culture understanding, uh, we cannot stop doing the business, number one. Number two, we must respect each other culture. When we involve in global business, we must respect each other culture. This is, the, this is the very best thing that you can do. For example, even Malaysia and Indonesia, almost similar culture, but still there is a difference. Even if you look at within the Mal uh, Indonesia, there are many people that differ from other parents. Like for example, I've been to Bali and I've been to even Jakarta. I can see a different culture there within the country. So it is not only a global phenomenon, the cultural differences exist within the country as well. But what, if, what actually we are doing in this supply chain management, supply chain management, they mentioned that you must integrate it, your partners in a system so that we understand each other. We understand each other. Before we do any kind of uh, businesses, we learn each other. Then you integrated the system. To your partner so by integrating we, we we are very much well aware about all those challenges that you may get it before so you can mitigate the demand problem you can mitigate the supply problem you can mitigate the operational problem as well so that's why the technology plays an important role in this uh, huge network system called uh, global supply chain management i hope okay. that my answer is uh, fine for you Okay, thank you, Mr. And my last question is about uh, maybe uh, like Mr. Tanto about sustainability. We know that the uh, issue about green in environment, that's the hot topic too in a uh, global supply chain. How sure. can we arrange that? <laughs> Very good. Well, for now, uh, you see every, every country, in fact, the G7, G20, they are struggling to do that. They are struggling to do that. And in fact, it is not only uh, only individual's hand or individual company's hand. It's, I mean, the government should take this initiatives to create some policies. The government should intervene that because you see, if the government doesn't intervene it, I'm sure that as an individual, how much you can contribute to the environment. Probably you can stop using plastic as an individual. That's maximum you can do it. But even if you look at yesterday, what happened, uh, the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand government announced the tax on uh, cow birth because they, they find out when the cow birth, actually there is a huge amount of methane come out. See, so this is some kind of uh, uh, government intervention is required if you really want a sustainable environment. If the government become very uh, profit oriented, then the problem will not solve soon. But if all the government across the world they really believe that they want to reduce this environment, I'm sure that it is possible. It is possible. So we need government intervention as well as the awareness from the individual company. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your explanation, Mr. Arun. You're welcome. Anyone else? Sorry, so, tadinya, no question. Uh, tadinya, 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 tadinya. Okay, I'm maybe the first the one would be... Okay, I uh, will. I will. Uh, I'll try to read it for the audience. So, good morning, Prof. Arun. My name is Amara Salsabila. So, Amara, uh, would you want to directly uh, turn on your feet? Uh, sorry, microphone. Good morning, Prof. Arun. My name okay, is. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Amara. Uh, my name is Amara Salsabila. Uh, I would like to ask related to sustainable supply chain problems. If the problems can be solved with AI, how about uh, transportation problems? Uh, as more companies cooperate with other companies uh, abroad, of course, transportation will be longer, which creates more emission, which makes uh, the supply chain less environmentally friendly. How the companies dealing with these problems? Thank you. Oh, very, very good question. Excellent question. But um, I'm sure you, that, see, uh, very good question. Well, um, you see, you uh, probably you are aware about it that most of the car now become electronic car. In fact, most of the vehicle actually has become electronic car, uh, electronically, um, uh, what is called run on the electric electronics. So as a result, if you look at the AI, if you look at the AI, AI definitely helps to uh, minimize the emissions. 
in terms of the card driving, in terms of sharing the data. See, if you look at all these automated car or driverless car, see, they don't use any petrol. They use only electricity. They use only the electricity. And you'll be surprised to know that there is an artificial sun project is going on in China. Artificial sun. Like if, if there is a sun on the, uh, on the sky, see, that is the sources. The solar, solar energy is the most clean sources. So the now human create that uh, power of the sun in, on the earth. And it will be freely delivered to every country by 2030. So I'm sure that if the AI is there, artificial intelligence, it will definitely helps us to minimize the evasion soon. Okay, so sheep, train, uh, plane, you see from by 2030, uh, yesterday the news came, by 2030, all the flight must use hydrogen, no more petrol, no more petrol. So emission will be reduced, no doubt about it, if the government wants. Amara, any more comments? I think that's enough. Thank you so much, Professor. Okay. Thank you, Amara. So we have incoming uh, questions in the Zoom chat. Muhammad Fajri and Sinta, would you want to directly deliver your question? Okay. Uh, good morning, Prof. Arun. Uh, my name is Muhammad Nur Fajri. I want to ask uh, from the explanation of the GSJM innovation, the things that can be done in the use of technology like software, AI, and robotics that requires a lot of funds. Now, and I want to ask, how about SME? What can small medium enterprise do uh, about it? Yes. Uh, very good question. Excellent question that uh, when you talk about the SMEs, yes, at the initial stage, the SMEs uh, may face difficulties in terms of um, what is called adopting this technology because it requires some money. It requires a huge amount, no doubt about it. However, by the help of the big companies, like when you uh, integrate yourself with the Google example, or when you integrate yourself with the Microsoft, like you see uh, my university, MSU, MSU uh, outsource their um, cloud computing. One example I'm just giving you, cloud computing, not by developing themselves, by, in other words, they integrated their system with the Microsoft. So you can actually get it uh, by integrating yourself with the partner. That is how the uh, small and medium organizations are growing day by day. But yes, you, you could say that then what about the domination? They will dominate for now, but we, we don't have any option too because there is a four big tech we consider, four big tech, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Apple. See, these are the four big tech already captured the entire world. So now if you really want to, um, uh, as a small and medium enterprise, if you think that I want to create my own supply chain, it may not work in that way. You can be the part of the supply chain management. So this is the reason why you have to understand how to integrate effectively you and with your partner. That is the future okay. of uh, GSM actually. Mm. Okay, thank you. I think this is enough. Thank you for the, your explanation, Prof. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Or maybe one last question, Professor, from Sinta. Sinta? Baik. Uh, Sebenarnya saya izin bertanya terkait ini ya, I would ask uh, about Prof. Arun. Usually, discussion uh, about global supply chain is on corporation. Is that applicable for SME also? Or there is model for SME to to grow up internationally. Okay, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the question uh, that she, may, uh, she asked is whether we can use this concept for the SME or not. Yeah. Okay. The, the indeed. Globally. Indeed, indeed, it is. If you look at any e-commerce, for example, Amazon. Amazon is a big company, but Amazon survived with this small, small companies. Amazon doesn't produce the uh, or manufacture doesn't manufacture the product. Think about a Grab Food or Uber, or see they don't have their own uh, product. Rather, they give a platform where this SMEs can uh, actually be the part of it. Like when you can be your own, you have your own car, but you cannot find the customer. So those platform helps you to do that. That is considered also a uh, global supply chain management. So definitely, it is applicable for SMEs as well. Global supply chain management or the supply chain management, forget about the global, supply chain management is a crucial and integral part of the business. 
there is a no other option. You, you cannot think uh, your business without having a uh, supply chain management. Okay. Okay. Sinda. Thank to the. Okay. Thank you, uh, Prof. Arun. It's clear from uh, our students. So uh, uh, I want to ask something, uh, Mr. Arun. Would you mind to share this uh, PowerPoint slide for our students, and we uh, want to upload it in the YouTube as well. Uh, uploaded. Uh, you for want the to upload? recording. For the Zoom recording. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Okay. You can. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Arun. Okay. Okay. So I will invite uh, Mr. Ganjar uh, to give some uh, last remarks and. Okay. Great presentation, Prof. Arun. And uh, when I uh, observe, I think our lecturer and our student. Uh, enjoy your presentation and here is for the uh, uh, for souvenir from us hopefully that you will remember us uh, for all of your journey so here is the certificate for our uh, event for our guest lecturing thank you prof Arun. thanks a lot thanks for having me thank you uh, prof Arun. so uh, that's the end of our session students and professor aruns we hope uh, this today's session uh, will give some very insightful lesson for all of us to understand what's going on in the global supply chain currently and what might be happen in the future. So see you in the next uh, session. Uh, one second, Arun. can yes. I, can I, can I, can I, because actually there is a mistake in my name. My name should be oh, yeah. A-R-U-N. A-R-U, U. Okay, so sorry. Arun. Okay, I do apologize. We will, we will revise the, Okay, no thanks a lot okay okay no problem okay you. see you everyone thank you sorry um, for the mistake it's okay it's okay thank you have a great weekend everyone professor Arun. you too you too